Chen. Good morning, members of parliament, support staff, visitors, and those following by various forms of media. Welcome to this continuation of public meeting number 10 of today, Wednesday, February 22nd, 2023. Members of parliament, before continuing for this meeting, we require just another 10 minute adjournment and we return back at 1038. Meeting adjourned.
Good morning once again, members of parliament, support staff, visitors, and those viewing by various forms of media. Excuse me, members, we're starting. Welcome again to this continuation of public meeting number 10 of today, Wednesday, February 22nd, 2023. I would like to give a special welcome to the Minister of Tourism, Economic Affairs, Transport and Telecommunication, Mr. Arthur Lambrix, who's actually with us in the House of Parliament for the first time since becoming Minister of TIAT. Also a special welcome to the support staff with him today. We've established quorum. We've established a quorum of 11 members. Please stand for a moment of silence. Thank you. I've received notice of absence from the following member, MP Bijlani. Are there any other notifications from M members of parliament at this time? That not being the case, members of parliament, we go over to the agenda point for today, which we have discussion of the general reconstruction of Princess Julian Juliana International Airport, PJIA, IS 188, 2022, 2023, dated November 14th, 2022. This is a request of the MPs Emmanuel, Heilige Martin, and Peterson. We go over to the agenda point. On November 14, 2022, Parliament received a letter, IS 188-2223, from the MPs Emmanuel, Heilige Martin, and Peterson with the request that an urgent public meeting of Parliament be convened to discuss the above-mentioned agenda point. The presence of the Prime Minister and Minister of TIAT was also requested. The meeting was convened on December 16, 2022, during which, after a presentation by then Minister of TIAT, Mr. Omar Atli, in accordance with the speaker's list, members of parliament were then given the opportunity to pose questions to the ministers in the first round. The meeting was then adjourned to allow the ministers time to prepare the answers to the questions posed by members of parliament in the first round. Today we have with us, Minister of Transport, Economic Affairs, and Telecommunication, Mr. Arthur Lambrix, who has returned to provide Parliament with the answers to the question posed by members of Parliament. I will now give the floor to the Honorable Minister of TIAT, Arthur Lambrix, to answer the questions posed by the members of Parliament in the first round. Minister Lambrix, you have the floor. Good morning, Honorable Members of Parliament. Good morning, Chair. Good morning, Clefier, support staff. Good morning to everyone listening via the radio, social media. Good morning, Sir Martin. Um, just a real quick little um, statement before I go to the questions. Um, coming also from a professional tourism background, before I, want, before I go into the answers, I want everyone to know um, that I myself also, recently having traveled through the airport, can feel some of the sentiments that was um, shown and stuff that was brought up in um, the last meeting on December 16th. So, of course, if you ask me if we can do better, definitely I can say we will and we should be doing better. Um, it is a serious concern and it does have my serious attention. So, going into the questions from MP Grisha Heiliger Martin uh, the status of the CFO at this current moment. The CFO has resigned as per March, end of March 2023. He has sent in that notice. A new CFO is already on the island and the boarding has started this week actually this Monday that has just passed, the 20th. Um, the present CFO, Ben van der Cliff, um, is the CFO now, and Bob Post will be the new CFO. What was the reason for the last CFO's abrupt resignation? Due to personal reason, Mr. van der Cliff sent his resignation. The detail of this has been discussed one-on-one -on -one with the supervisory board and the shareholder. Um, I will go a little further into that with some other questions that were posed a little further down by some other MPs, so we have a little bit more clarity on it. Um, proper signage for the inconvenience, the airport being under construction. It was mentioned that we only have two signs. Um, I did go down myself. I did also check. We have two signs in the departure hall, one at gate one and one at gate two. We have also one on the screening ramp. We have one in the transit corridor. We have one in the immigration area. <laughs> on the air side, we also have a big banner. At the arrival meet and greet, also a big banner. The passport control, we also have one. And um, that brings the total, I believe, to nine. If they were recently placed, of course, um, 
they're always looking at seeing how they can make things better. So if we need more and we see need for more, we will, um, or they will do what they have to do to increase their signature. Has the official notice resignation been sent to the airport community? It has not. It has been relayed to the relevant people and management teams at the airport. The official notice will happen as soon as the transition takes place end of March. Why do we post vacancy ads for high level jobs elsewhere and not first on the island? I have been in contact with the airport also about this to verify. I haven't had a chance to look at all of the recent and past posts that they've had. The ones that I have had an uh, opportunity to see, they have shown me that they are doing it internally and on island before it goes anywhere else. Has Schiphol provided training to um, any employees of the PGIA? Yes, numerous persons were trained by the Royal Schiphol Group. Some visited the uh, Netherlands to do so, some were done on island. Some of them that had the training were the legal, the HR, the commercial and operations department, with the most recent being the operations director, uh, Mr. Emile Levons. His training was done on island for a six month period. So someone came from the Netherlands to do that training here. Copy of the PGIA recruitment policy. Um, if none, this is my, um, what I took out of what was posed. If none, why not is what I asked at the airport and is making the policy, if not in place with, um, if it's not in place with the HR director, it was answered to me they do not have a recruitment policy. So that was a very good question. I did put some emphasis on it that it should be put in place, so that email went out already to the HR to work on. Um, how was the HR director chosen? Was it done accordingly to the recruitment policy? Was it advertised internally with all employees? The part with the recruitment policy, we didn't have one, so that was not done. Was it advertised internally with all employees? Yes. Um, the person was screened. They were already working in the HR department and they were nominated to take up that post. Seeing the title that they had and the job that they were doing and fulfilling throughout the whole process and everything that went through until 2022, they were upgraded to director of that same department instead of manager. Project management unit, what is the structuring, who leads, who falls, in what line, are the employees are externally hired, the PMU project manager is Mirto Brell. His team consists of three internal members and six external. So three are employees from the airport and six are not. They were hired um, through the, through the, what was it, through the engineering, no, what was it, company, okay, we'll get back to that. What other potential setbacks in Ballas Nadam? No further setbacks were on the horizon according to what was informed to me. Everything should be staying as planned. Um, God forbid, through the hurricane season, no issues, and we should stay how it is forecast to be. Ballas Nadam, any requests for additional funding? Is there any delay due to that? Uh, there is no request for any additional funding at the moment, and we should have no further delays either. Um, did Ballas Nadam purchase the wrong paint materials? What was the whole story with that? The intention was uh, intermescent paint would be replaced. The problem with the intermescent paint was, from what I gathered and what was I, I was informed, was that originally, yes, according to the report that Mr. Emmanuel referred to, it was mentioned that all of the paint should have been redone. Um, apparently, somewhere between that and the ordering or the making the list of goods that we require to do so, it was not the right quantities that was on it. I have not had a chance, honestly, to dive further into it, but um, that was the answer that I got, and that is why the little increase, or big increase, for the additional materials was needed. Um, projected and actual figures of the passenger movements from November to April 2023. The actual passenger movements, I can say, from November until now are approximately 123,000. Um, projected through April, I did not get a chance to tally those numbers and go that far. Did the airport increase fees on airlines are affecting the airfare? Departure fee remains intact, nothing was increased. 
there was an increase in the airport improvement fee, which was done in 2019 and is still active at this time. When was the last departure fee increased? Who authorized? The departure fee was not increased. Um, only the, the one that I mentioned, the airport improvement fee, which was in 2019. And that went from 550 to $11. Do we keep relations with the airlines on the regular? The airport has their monthly meetings with the airlines. Um, the facilitation meeting is to discuss the progress on the reconstruction, monthly business, any changes on the aerodrome, and any other important topics to be discussed. As the ministry side also, I know um, the Tourist Bureau and other, other um, persons from the airport also attend yearly conferences, which are the routes conferences, which keep contact with the airlines, any new routes to be developed, any new possible potential business, and to keep that relation going which we have one coming up in the next month as well. And then on to the question, questions from Christopher, MP Christopher Emanuel. The NACA, I'm trying to keep them in order, Mr. Emanuel, MP Emanuel, as you requested. Hopefully I did a good job. The NACA report, um, I have received a copy. I have not gone through the whole report yet, but I do have a copy of it. Memo of the noise test done at the airport, can I have a copy? Can I have information on how the test was done and what noise levels? I did not have a chance to get that report. When did the PGIA team and boards realize the budget overrun? The budget overrun was done, again, due to the incorrect calculation of the materials, which was the intermessen paint, which, according to the information I was provided, shows that that happened in May, June of 2022. So that is when they found out about that. Need to have the minutes of the meeting. I have requested, but it was mentioned that it's confidential. I'm still seeing how confidential that is. So I will let you know and follow up with you on that. The selection of the main contractor was done via a formal bidding process following the World Bank recruitment. Are any more budget issues foreseen before the final overall completion? Um, no, was the answer. Seeing um, that everything remains on track and that nothing else does pop up. Sometimes things can happen, but nothing is foreseen or, you know, everything is exposed now, so I don't think anything else should pop up out of um, anywhere. And God forbid the hurricane season, everything goes well. Otherwise, not no other foreseen issues. What is the contract amount now at present for Ballas Nadem versus when they initially won the bid? When they won the bid, from my research, it was 89 million. Um, it was extended by the seven million because of the incorrect calculation, so it is now at 96 million. When was the oversight notice in the peeling of the paint? Why wasn't this immediately passed on to everyone so that we are all aware of the oversight who is the local project director? The situation again was May, June 2022, and it was passed along to the key stakeholders. I was not there, I cannot reconfirm that, but it was done in July 2022. Um, if I can suggest you just move the laptop a little back and then the mic, yeah, that better? should be better. Yeah. Good? Yeah. Sorry. Um, what technical review report was done from the American firm? Uh, the only reviews that I saw that were done, anything with technical or with reviews, was we had the Corrigan, which is the designer, which is from America. We had the RHDHV, which is the supervising engineer from the Netherlands, so they are not from America. The other American firm was the Arup, which is the third party structural engineering firm, which is also from the US. So I can only conclude that it has to be either the Arup or the Corgan that you were referring to, but if it's not, maybe you can narrow down the question for me and I can dive a little further into details and see what I can dig up. Who will carry the responsibility of the 10 million? What is the 10 million for that? was mentioned. This question, um, again, I was deciphering the questions out of what went on in the meeting, so I did not get the questions in writing, so I was not too clear on the 10 million part. If you can maybe let me know in the round what that was about. Um, why no internal search for the CFO? Wasn't the intention to have the local trained under the last Kippel appointee? Yes, it was. Um, the CFO selection was done by the BDO. 
there is an internal applicant. They will go back on in quarter four of 2023 to continue the training. And by quarter two, 2024, when the airport should be complete, they should be ready to start and hit the ground running. Um, who was, was Schiphol compensated for lost CFOs? N no. Airport paying French contractor base to remove the debris in Coal Bay. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, the waste management company is a St. Martin licensed and Dutch registered company that was subcontracted by the main contractor for the handling of the construction debris. It was confirmed that certain of those components will be exported slash recycled and others will be used as landfill or for construction purposes when they're doing new developments. New developments with the managing of the airport. There are no new developments other than CFO, which will take place officially end of March. On to the questions of Ms. MP Sarah Westcott-Williams. U.S. preclearance, do we have anything with the constructional plan of the overall airport was my question because again, I was listening to what was asked and trying to make questions out of them. The airport and the ministry have put together a team in 2020, which will revisit the um, US preclearance business case. My, con my discussions with the airport were um, if they were ready even to accommodate the US preclearance into the building, it would take a whole investment and a whole project to do that and have a separate building put down, which will cost at that time when they calculated around 80 million. Um, if the preclearance was something that we were looking forward to doing, it is a good idea. I do think it has benefits, but it also has costs involved. So those were also put at about 8 million a year to operate that. How many locals have been hired under the Ballast Nadam to work on the project? I asked if actual and factual numbers of, of how many are at present. At present, we have at least around 45% of the 100 to 200 workers being local. Matter of overlooked, and this is only because, again, some of the works that have to be done, some of the work that has to be done was explained are works that we cannot recruit local people for or that are not qualified to handle that work. Matters of overlooked, wrongly used materials, explanation on this. The question was a little bit clear to me, and I, maybe you can give some clarification on that also. I don't know if it's back up about the paint or if something else. Consequences of the wrongly overlooked materials by the engineer and architect, who are the engineer? Corgan is the engineering and the design company. Um, the wrongly used materials, again, I need some information on that, please, when we have the chance. If the resigning of the three CFOs has a red flag for the minister, um, it would have a red flag, I think, for anyone if we see it happening. But when I dove a little deeper, again, which I will elaborate more on when I answer Ms. MP um, Gums's questions, it will make it a little bit more clear, I think, with the CFOs and why what has been happening has been happening. The status of the personnel at the PGIA and any agreements, payments, where do we stand? They have restored the 12.5% since the 1st of January 2023, um, and everything is back to normal. Who is the Forensic Caribbean Services? Do we have any ongoing investigations, results of the investigations? They were a company that reviewed certain cases for the PGIA and for the Supervisory Board of Directors to ensure when the integrity and the interests were thought to be compromised or an issue, they investigated to make sure that everything was kept intact and protected. Additional loan, is, is the airport seeking an additional loan? What was received? What is the status now? What amount in question? In 2022, the US bond loan was refinanced via Aruba Investment Bank. The total refinance was 90 million US, giving the airport a better loan agreement and an additional capital expenditure of eight million to invest in more improvements. On to the questions of MP Melissa Gums. The seconding, secondment contract. My question was who all on such contracts and if the CFO was on such a contract. Mm -hmm. The CFO is not on that contract, but Royal Schiphol group has that contract with our airport. 
Um, this was actually when I was listening to the meeting, one of the most interesting questions, the first thing I went and researched because it was something new to me. But it is very simple that it basically means that they have to provide and will provide that person in that seat at all times. Who that person will be can be anyone that is qualified, anyone that is up to the task, anyone that has the professionalism to do so. It is not an easy job, so it is not easy to find persons. Um, our first CFO that was sent, I believe, from that Netherlands um, Schiphol group was the youngest one. However, although young, not experienced enough, a lot of issues from what I understood and from what I've seen. All of the other ones that have come thus far, including the ones that we have now, are 60 years plus. Some of them are retired, some of them have been retired, pulled back in, again, because of the professionalism and the expertise needed. So having said that, they are not here forever. They are not planning to be here forever. It can be three months, it can be five months, it can be after six months, they don't like it, they, they want to go back to their retirement. Royal Schiphol Group, of course, will make sure to provide a new person fitting to fill that position. So that is sometimes why it looks like someone is leaving abruptly because of an internal issue or something being wrong. It is not really that case. So I think that was something also that I myself was a little bit concerned about, but when I read up on it and I looked into it, it was an excellent question asked by the MP. And I think the most, well, the best question to clear up a lot of concerns that are out there. Um, I have the next question from MP Ludmila de Weaver. The inquiry about the 12.5% cuts of salaries from the PGA employees. This has now been put back. Uh, are they receiving 100%? If not, okay. So yes, they are from January 1st, 2023, receiving back their 100% original pay packages. Has the noise hindrance stopped now? Or are employees still working under the condition of jackhammering, even if for a short while? Unfortunately, um, yes, the works are still continuing. They are trying to keep the noise levels down as much as possible and to do the jobs as quickly as they can. But of course, having the downtime, stopping the works and not being able to continue, it will, it will hinder the deliverance time of the final project. So we need to try to find ways still around that and they're doing their best to do it as most accommodating as possible so it doesn't affect uh, before the closing off, I also want to share one more thing again, which is my personal experience again from the trip when I had lately, when I came back. Um, I unfortunately did not get to encounter the jackhammering sounds, thing, which is maybe a good thing. However, I experienced the blackout. Um, during the blackout that happened, I stayed at the airport for an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes throughout the blackout, although I had my bags, just to see what was going on to see what was happening, how it was handled, how it would be dealt with. Unfortunately, it was not dealt with the right way because no one ever came out and apologized. <coughs> Excuse me. As MP Grisha Heiliger Martin specified in the last meeting or stressed on a little bit, it's very important to apologize for certain situations. When things happen, a lot of things are sometimes out of our control, but the emphasis of and the the importance of showing people that you care and that it does mean something and that you are apologizing for it goes a long way. So having said this, I want to reassure again that the airport does have my full attention and the progress also has my full attention and I will be continuing um, to monitor exactly what is going on and to keep hopefully everyone on the toes so that we can keep on the deadline and have the completion on time. Thank you. Thank you. Minister Lambrix, for your uh, introduction today and also the answering of the questions from members of parliament in the first round. Members of parliament, before going to the second round, there's of course opportunity for clarifications to the questions that were answered by the minister. I would ask you to just indicate that by um, pressing your mic. I see we have two MPs already for clarification. We go first to MP Sarah Westcott-Williams. Thank you, Chairman, and a good morning to you, to our staff, to my colleagues. A good morning to the Minister and his support staff here present this morning. 
Thank you for the answers to the questions. I just need to note that these questions were asked approximately three months ago. So allow me to immediately go over to a clarification that the minister asked on a question, and that had to do with a repeated question of mine regarding wrongly used material. So material that was not the right material, better said. Um, that was based on an article from the airport at that time, at the time of the questions in the, in the meeting. So that is to clarify that. With respect to the answers given, and my question on the US preclearance in particular, the minister responded that from information given to him, a team was established in 2020. And thus my question with respect to that is, did the airport or whether it was the government providing the information about the team being established, was any further indication given as to if this team did anything? And if so, what have they done? Have they produced anything? Have they proposed anything? The minister continued to say that based on my question, the minister also asked some questions in terms of do we have any overview of what this will cost? Is that taken into account? What has been factored in? And so my question is, did the minister get responses to his questions which related to the US preclearance question of mine? The, the matter of who is being employed at the Princess Juliana International Airport, a number was given of 45% being local. Does the airport have a certain criteria for who they consider local? So when 45% is being, is being touted as local employment, what criteria have they used to distinguish the 45 from the 55? And is there any more information in terms of the jobs that according to the contractor could not be filled by local St. Martiners. So do we have that overview of the 55% that actually labor had to be, I guess, brought from abroad because that type of labor was not available here? So is there any more information regarding the type of labor that required persons to be hired not under the banner of being local? The I took note of the other answers, Mr. Chairman, and as far as clarifications are concerned, those are the two that I would like some clarity on, and I thank you. Thank you, MP Westcott Williams. Next, we have MP Grisha Heilega Martin. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Good morning to my fellow colleagues, and welcome to the Minister of Tiat, Minister Lambri, and his support staff. Uh, Mr. Chairman, it was a bit not clear for me. I, I felt like maybe I missed a few questions. Um, and I would want to know, for the record, if we're going to be getting the answers in writing, Mr. Chairman, from the minister for us to review, because I feel as if I'm a few, like a lot of questions were missed. A lot of my questions was missed. Um, I have a few clarifications regarding the recruitment policy that obviously the airport does not have. Um, you stated through you, Mr. Chairman, the uh, minister stated that he sent an email requesting that they do have, that they provide him with one. Is there a set date for that? Um, did they respond to the minister and stated that indeed they will be working on one? And if so, when? And hopefully can we have a, a, a copy of it when it's ready? There were some other points that I may have missed. Correct me if I'm wrong. I could have missed it or, or not. Um, regarding the, the project management team. I know I asked about the structure. I also wanted to know a bit about the budget. I don't remember, recall getting that information. And I have another question regarding the, um, the paint. That was not clear as well, Mr. Chairman. Um, my question is simple. Did they buy the wrong paint, yes or no? That's all I want to know. Was the wrong paint bought, yes or no? or no. And with that, I leave it 
for now, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. And next for clarifications, MP Ludmila De Weaver. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning to you, Khifi, and my colleagues and the minister and his team here today. My questions um, in the first round were, were, were very few. There were two of them. One was a duplicate of some other MPs, so my clarification is just for the second question, where I specifically asked about a letter that was sent to government by the airport management on November 18 regarding when they can lift the 12 and a half percent. The minister in his answer stated that the 12 and a half percent was, in, was reinstated as of January 1st. I, I just want to make sure that that is exactly correct because in my background, they did not receive it as of January 1st, which means that you would have gotten paid by the end of the month. So I do know that in December, they received a hardship allowance, which is a line item in their salary. As of January payroll, they did not receive the 12.5% back. So I just want clarification. Indeed, if that was paid back, I am not talking about a hardship allowance, which was a one-time payment in December. I am talking about the 12.5% being back in because I'm sure through you, Mr. Chair, all of, our, all of our colleagues here, as well as CALM, the rest of the government civil servants, have noticed the difference in their salary slip from January 2023. I want to note that same difference is noticed in the salary slip of the employees of the airport. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, MP De Weaver, And next, MP Christophe Emmanuel. Mr. Chairman, thank you very much, and good morning to you. The Honorable Minister and his support staff, my honorable colleagues and everyone in St. Martin who is listening via whichever means, I would attempt to answer the question for the minister that my colleague just asked concerning the 12.5% to my honorable colleague. No, they did not receive it in January. HR sent them a letter that they will receive it in June. Okay? They'll receive it in June. That's when they're going to receive it. In June, HR was sending that letter. Mr. Chairman, through you to the Honorable Minister, I just have one question for clarification. One, because I know the minister is a new minister, so I can't put it on him. However, if those answers, yeah, came from the CEO, Mr. Mingo, they're all lies. Every one of them. All lies. All. Every one of them. It's not true. They're not true. You don't have no 45% locals down there. It's, it's, you don't you have that. You don't have that at all. But where I want to go is concerning, Mr. Chairman, the document and the paint. We are talking about $2 million here, or three, or four, or five, or six. We're talking about $10 million. It's not me who is saying it, Honorable Chair. It's not me who is saying it. It is the airport that put out that press release. Now, the minister is saying it was an overlooked uh, oversight. This is what I'm saying. This is what I need my colleagues to understand. This is what I need the people of Simon to understand. In 2017, but before that, Mr. Chairman, the engineering firm that built the airport, the first thing that was there is Royal Hasconin. Under Royal Hasconin, if you go and you Google Royal Hasconin, under Royal Hasconin, you're going to see Narco which is a company under Royal Hasconin. The airport commissioned the study in 2017. It's a report. You said you have it, but you didn't get to read the whole thing. And fair enough. You should. So then I just would like to know, I would like to know, how is it that that document was used for the insurance for the, for, for the loan through Aruba. It was used for everything, that document. Can you clarify really and truly what it is you're saying based on that answer? Clarify it because I don't understand the answer. I thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. And I see no others for clarification at this time. Um, let, allow me two minutes to converse with the minister to see... Uh, how much time he might need to answer those questions that were posed. We'll be back in just two minutes.
Good, MPs, good. Welcome back to this uh, public meeting. Uh, we had a few questions and clarifications, um, but the minister does require about half an hour um, because he will need to just uh, converse with the airport as well to get those answers. So if we'll allow him about half an hour, so we come back 10 to 12. Yeah, that's about right. So 10 minutes to 12, we return with the answers to the clarifications, and then we go over to the second round. Meeting adjourned.
Good afternoon, honorable members of parliament, honorable minister of Tiat, Arthur Lambrix, to those following, or good, af good morning still, almost afternoon. Um, welcome back to this public meeting number 10 of today, Wednesday, February 22nd, 2023. We did have as agenda point, discussion of the general reconstruction of the Princess Juliana International Airport, where the minister provided the answers to questions from members of parliament that were posed in the first round. There were some clarifications requested by the members of parliament, and the minister has now returned to answer those points of clarification. So at this time, I will give the floor to the Honorable Minister of Tiat, Arthur Lambrix, for the answers to the clarifications. You have Good afternoon again, everyone. I'm back from the short recess that we had. The answers to the questions, which ones I can answer. Um, MP Westcott Williams, the first questions were the wrong materials. Did we purchase the wrong paint? The question was yes or no. So the answer is no. The USPC um, team, which is for the preclearance, that was then under, I believe, Minister Johnson back in that time. The actual accomplishments that they had and what was produced, I honestly cannot tell you, but I will get that information and relay it back to you via writing. Um, just a slight correction. I think the first question was actually to MP Grisha Heiliger Martin, the one about the yes or no. Can you just oh, repeat it just I'm to be sorry. clear? Did I have it? Um... No, you did ask also, I think, MP. Oh, so just let me clarify that clarification then. MP Westcott Williams. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I did ask about the wrong material and indeed, and I said it was based on the press release. And MP Heiliger, she yes asked no? specifically on the yes or no okay. on the material. So did they buy it were, wrongly? Yes. So you were answering both those clarifications, I guess, with that answer to satisfy both? Okay, I, you got the yes, yes or no as well. Yes. Okay, Minister, you can continue. Um, the USP clearance team, I just answered. When it comes to the, when it comes to seeing the local airport looks that is uh, a lot of work. Uh, okay. Who is legal um, based on what the airport looks at? Um, legally allowed to work and has all of the documents. They did confirm to me they don't go into depth where it concerned who is con go, go ahead. Let me who round is considered that point. a local. Um, for them, it was more double checking that they had an ID card, which, if we dig a little further, means, of course, someone that is naturalized or someone that comes in or born somewhere else with residency might also fall into that bracket. Okay, Minister, let me allow MP Westcott Williams briefly. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. The minister referred to my question being who is considered legal. That that was not that was Lo not local, my question. Local, local, sorry. Oh, local. Okay. Sorry, I maybe said legal. Based on local. Local. local, yes. So they, they basically base that on having a Dutch St. Martin ID card as which of course can mean someone else is considered uh, the questions from MP Grisha Heiliger Martin, the recruitment policy and an expected date. The draft proposal, we should have something by April 2023, at least a draft ready for that recruitment policy. The project management team and the cost involved, I will have that. I don't have it at this time. Uh, MP De Weaver. The hardship allowance, um, that was, first of all, let's, let me go to question two, the 12.5% salary cuts and how it was done. They did not take any cuts from the base salary of any employees. That 12.5% was derived from removing the vacation allowance and also from removing the performance allowance at the end of the year. Um, at the end of December 2022, seeing what the employees had to go through, seeing all of the cuts that were made. Um, the airport saw a possibility to still have a small percentage because the whole 12 and a, it didn't go as planned. They found a way to across the board offer everyone a sort of bonus still, which was 1500 guilders, which was paid across the board to all employees. Um, of course, the law was retracted and the 12.5% was retracted from the 1st of January. The reason why no one would see that on their pay slips is again because it did not come from their base salary. So the salary would reflect the same. Um, 
anyone taking vacation in 2023, according to what was informed to me, will might be affected if they take vacation prior to June 2023, because that is when the airport will be paying out their vacation allowances. Uh, normally it is done that when they request a vacation, they honor their allowance. So it might affect, of course, someone that has taken vacation in January and would not reflect on their pay slip, but in June, it will be retroactively paid back. It was confirmed to me that also the performance bonus in December will also be paid as per regular in December. So no retroactive for that when December gets it. In May, they will be paid. They'll be paid that in December. Okay. Um, the legality, of course, of the um, paying the retroactive for the vacation pay, I don't know how that stands, but it is being something I am looking into um, as minister because I am curious to see if it is legal or not legal and what we can do to fix it or remedy it maybe. Uh, moving on to the questions of MP Emanuel, the 10 million in paint. I was a little confused with the 10 million because I saw seven. The seven is for the seven months and the, the paint and what has to be done. Of course, the final number will not be seven. It'll probably be closer to 10. The reason being the extension of the construction. There also has to be an extension of the insurance for the construction. There will probably have to be extensions on rent, personnel, security. Um, that would amount to making that 10 million that is being posed as a question. And I believe that was all of the questions. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Minister, for the answers to the clarifications. Uh, members of Parliament, we have received the clarifications from the minister and would normally go now into the second round. We've uh, not had an opportunity for lunch and we also have a 2 p.m. meeting. Uh, therefore, I think with the next meeting week being in March the 6th, I would think that it would be more prudent to have the minister return on that day at an early time. And as we've seen, the minister is dedicated as much as possible to delivering the questions the same day to the members of parliament. So perhaps if we return on that day and you've received the questions from the second round, have members of the airport like you had them in communication, maybe even have them here and provide the answers the same day to the members of parliament. Because for us to now go into the second round, it will be very tight for us to be able to have lunch and then prepare for our next meeting at two o'clock. Uh, I see MP Grisha Helga Martin. No, I was prepared to speak in the second round, Mr. Chairman. So I, would, I will then adjourn this meeting like I just described, which would be to have the minister return in the meeting week of March the 6th in the morning. Minister, I'm asking you to ensure that you come with members of the airport team that can assist you with providing the answers of the second round the same day, uh, the, the week of March the 6th. Yeah. yeah, so tentatively we will get in touch with you in that meeting week. Yes, a point of order, MP Grisha Heilige Martin. Mr. Chairman, I would like to request a proposal. Well, actually, just a, a notice that my questions, a third of my questions were not answered, and I would ask if I can get those in, in writing, because I was going to ask them again in the second round, but since we're going to wait until March 6, I propose that maybe the staff would take their time, or maybe I'll email my questions, and at least I can get them to me in writing before March 6, if that's possible, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Okay. Um, unfortunately, Minister, you did hear from the Member of Parliament that some of her questions that were posed in the first round were not answered in the first round. And um, yeah, that's, that's, she will, she is offering to send it by email, but just note that uh, it is very important. Um, you're, you're new to Parliament, so we'll give you the ropes. Whenever the members of Parliament pose their questions, you have your team, you have members from TIAT or whoever, to note down all the questions verbatim as possible, and then you can return with the answers. Because one of the things that sometimes might happen is that then they have to use their other round to pose questions again from the first round. In this case, the Member of Parliament is offering to send it to you in writing, so we would then ask you to make sure that before you return, you answer those questions in writing as well. That's clear? Okay, so Members of Parliament, we'll adjourn this meeting until the next meeting week. Uh, during those convocations, you'll see the minister will return in the morning. And as I said, let's do our best to get the answers the same day. Meeting adjourned. <laughs>